a song today that is a new song. And I heard it for the first time uh, in my apartment in New York City on Bleecker Street. One morning when I was opening a bag, I'd put some stuff in it a few weeks beforehand. And in the bag was uh, a copy of a CD called Shamrock City, uh, all about Butte, Montana, recorded by the group Solace. And uh, Seamus Egan, the great flute player who grew up in Philadelphia, uh, had given it to me and I'd forgotten that I had it. Uh, often happens when you're when you're running around and, and, and getting places and leaving places and going places. Uh, and I took it out and I put it uh, on the on the player and I went to get my coffee and then I stopped. And I sat down. And then the song finished and I played it again. And I knew I was listening to something quite extraordinary. Something very different than the songs being written by songwriters today on both sides of the Atlantic. This was a song uh, based on the Haiti of the Irish as copper miners in Butte, Montana, but it had a feel to it that made it sound like a song written at the time. And it was clearly impeccably researched. And uh, I said to myself, I want to learn this song. And that doesn't happen too often with songs written by contemporary songwriters at this stage of my life. Um, and then I, I called up Seamus Egan and I said, can you tell me the story of this song? He said, well, he said, uh, Michael Conway was a grand uncle of mine and there was a story always in the family uh, about him. He was a, a, a fighter, a uh, bare knuckle fighter, and he, he went off out to the West and he got killed. We don't know much about it, except it's somehow connected to Butte, Montana. Now, bare knuckle boxing was soaring in popularity in America at that time, and in fact, one of the most famous boxers was Irish American, John L. Sullivan. And he was known as the Boston Strong Boy. He was America's first boxing superstar, you could say, and one of the highest paid athletes of his era. He was the last American heavyweight champion of bare knuckle boxing and went on to become the first heavyweight champion of Marcus of Queensbury gloved boxing. And he held that position for more than 10 years until 1892. Seamus Egan's great, great granduncle, Michael Conway, was part of that boxing tradition. Now, I'd been in Montana many times touring with James, uh, with uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Keane and Robbie O'Connell and Liz Carroll and other musicians over the years, Tommy Sands, Junior O'Donnell, been to Kalispell, been to Missoula quite a bit, Miles City even in eastern Montana where the Buckaroos were shooting off their, their uh, revolvers on a Saturday night into the air, fortunately. But I'd never been to the town that fascinated me most, which is Butte, Montana. I knew about the Irish connections there. So uh, that was all that Seamus uh, knew as he was growing up in Philadelphia. Uh, and eventually did go to Butte, Montana and started to find out more about, about Michael Conway. But uh, it was Mick McCauley, I found, a fellow member of Solus, that had written the words to it. Uh, and I contacted Mick and he started to tell me, and I stopped and said, Mick, would you uh, have any objections to standing or sitting in front of a microphone over there in Callan, Kilkenny, where you're at at the moment, and telling this extraordinary story of how you got to write the song? And he said, I will have no objections, whatever. And he said, I'll do it for you. And he has, Mick McCauley. Well, the song Michael Conway was written as part of a solace project that we embarked upon somewhere around 2011, I think, after we got the opportunity to visit and perform a concert out there uh, in that amazing city that is Butte, Montana. To be honest, um, up to that point, I, I had been only uh, vaguely aware of the unique history of this place uh, and the strong Irish aspect to its history. But uh, Seamus Egan had mentioned to us and to some of the local organisers, uh, Brendan McDonough and Pat Burns, among many others, that his dad had told him uh, that his great-great-granduncle, Michael Conway, had left Ireland and, along with his two brothers, uh, had made their way out to Butte, Montana, in seek of their fortune, as had so many other thousands from Ireland. Uh, but over the next several months, um, the folks out there in Butte opened many doors uh, to help him uh, trace and discover documentary evidence to confirm what had, I suppose, up to that point uh, just been uh, a story in his family. And uh, meanwhile, mostly, I suppose, just as a result of my keen interest in Irish-American history, 
I was totally hooked on abuse and its story. Um, I read everything I could to get uh, everything I could get my hands on, and uh, soon it sort of became clear that we were going to have to create a musical album to tell not just the story of Michael Conway's life and journey, but to pay tribute to the Butte Irish and the many hardships that they had to endure in that uh, rough and tumble everyday life of an ever-developing frontier mine, mining camp. Um, I suppose as a songwriter, it was always going to be of the utmost importance to me that I researched uh, it all to a point where I hoped to paint an authentic picture of what that life might have felt like. Uh, I mean, as well as uh, visits to the archives out there in Butte, uh, I devoured many, many books um, telling of Butte's rich and colourful and often tragic history and politics. Uh, books like uh, The Butte Irish and Fire and Brimstone by Michael Punk uh, were of great help and interest, um, the latter of which uh, looked at the events leading up to the fire in the Granite Mountain Speculator Mine uh, out there in uh, 1917, which uh, incidentally remains to this day the worst hard rock mining disaster in history. Um, the Battle for Butte by uh, Michael Malone and The War of the Copper Kings by uh, C.B. Glasscock are all two other sources that spring to mind, but uh, there, were, there were many, many others. And the song itself was uh, Michael Conway. It was the first song written for the Solace album Shamrock City. And I suppose we were happy to set that, uh, have it be the standard for the other songs that were to come. Um, Seamus had written a beautiful melody that uh, I, I just took away and I wrote that, I put the lyrics to it. Um, we were lucky, I guess, that we had the concrete journey and the amazing life story of this one man to help us reflect and honour and shine a light on the lives and letters and testimonials of the many thousands of brave Irish men and women who made their way out to Butte to start a new life in that developing America uh, of the late 1800s and early 1900s. Um, I guess all our hard work and attention to detail was appreciated by the people of Butte because uh, we went out there and performed the entire album live in the old station house there in Butte and uh, we got a standing ovation on the night and uh, subsequently then in an official mayoral ceremony they honoured us by uh, bestowing on us the official title of Cultural Ambassadors of Butte, Montana an honour which we are extremely proud of and forever humbled by. What an amazing story from Mick McCauley in County Kilkenny. I ended up going to Butte myself and, and, and playing the Montana Folk Festival there in 2019 with Athena Turgis and Billy McComiskey and Nell O'Leary dancing. And uh, I started to learn more uh, about the story of how the town came to be an Irish town. I'd, I'd, I'd generally known about the story from reading David Emmons' book, The Irish of Butte, Montana, some years back, uh, and the story of the copper magnate from Bally James Duff in County Cavan, uh, a, a man called Marcus Daly. And he left Bally James Duff at the age of 15, went to New York City, uh, and uh, went out to Virginia City, Nevada, uh, to a silver mine uh, which had been discovered and developed by the great entrepreneur John Mackey from Dublin. Uh, it was a silver mine that became known as the Comstock Lode and known thereafter because it was so prosperous as the Big Bonanza. And uh, young Marcus Daly worked there with uh, John Mackey, learned the trade, he also worked with George Hurst, whose son was Randall Hurst, and they became enormously wealthy men. And in fact, John Mackey and Marcus Daly were the first two, I suppose by today's standards, Irish-born billionaires in America. Eventually, uh, Marcus Daly went to Butte, Montana, and uh, he went there as a gold prospector, and he bought a mine called the Alice Mine. Notice there was copper there, uh, and eventually sold that mine, and then he bought the Anaconda Mine. He became the, the copper baron. The Anaconda Mine, uh, the biggest uh, copper strike in the history of the world. And in fact, the, the hill uh, where the mine, uh, the granite hill where the mine was situated, was known as the richest hill on earth, and actually still is the richest hill on earth. Butte, Montana, copper capital of the world. 
built on what has long been known as the richest hill on earth. Below the surface, the men of the Anaconda Copper Mining Company answer their country's urgent need for more and more copper by tapping a great new source of this precious red metal. It became a boom town, attracting Irish people from all over Ireland, but particularly uh, from the Beira Peninsula. There are more O'Sullivans in the phone directory in Montana than any other town in America. For a while, it was the most Irish town in America around the turn of the century, around 1900. The biggest percentage of the population that were Irish-born of any town. To this day, it has one of the biggest St. Patrick's Day parades in America. Although mining output slowly declined over the years, Butte has remained a significant source of copper throughout most of the 20th century. Sort of a sad town economically in many ways these days, uh, the copper mines have long closed, uh, the big smelter is gone, though the smokestack remains, and uh, there, there's a, an eerie uh, sight as you're going through a pristine Montana with the high skies, the big skies of Montana, and you see ahead of you this extraordinary hill, and it's half stripped. Uh, it's like going to one of those Appalachian towns that's had strip mining. But it's a, it's a very, very animated town. It's very, uh, it's, it's very friendly. And if you're Irish, you get a big welcome and played the Montana Folk Festival and had a great time there. Um, at one time, it was uh, very prosperous with the uh, alleged opium dens uh, and, uh, and brothels that were famous. Charlie Chaplin uh, went there several times a year. We can only imagine why he went there. Uh, and it was a very colorful town in this time. Uh, it's now, in a sense, a shadow of that, but great people there, and I enjoyed meeting them. It's a great honor to do this song. Uh, I love it. It's impeccably researched, as, uh, as Mick McCauley has, has, uh, has told us, uh, and I'm uh, going to be performing it with uh, some of my favorite musicians. John Doyle, who was in the group Solace, but had left before uh, the Shamrock City album was made, uh, will be on guitar and harmonies. There's nobody better at that job than John Doyle, and he's, uh, he's recording in North Carolina. Um, there's Haley Richardson, also in North Carolina, playing the fiddle. And there's the inimitable Brenda Castles and Concertina and, uh, and Harmonies in, in Dublin. She's from County Meath originally. Michael Conway. Oh, my name is Michael Conway. In old Ireland I was born near the lake of Clunacolly on the bright summer's morn. Ah, but then came cruel winter to break and scatter my poor home. And soon came the harsh day that forced me to roam. While we reached bold Philadelphia in the brave land of the free, there I met with my two brothers, there was Pat James, then me. And we were destined for the rich land, fate owned us all from earth. We were bound for Butte, Montana, the richest hill on earth. Where the pockets they bought heavy, when the coppers were running high, where the hill rewards its brave sons, its fortune or die. Where they tread on silver dollars on the crowded bar roof of gold, while they strip the granite mountain of its precious copper robe. steam train and went out into the yellow mist. There was hope still in our hearts then, and a fight in either fist. No kind face to lead us up to where the dirty smelters spat. And this there I took to hard labor as a new mine and rat. Where they trail the hours of daylight for the smell of the copper ore, where is whiskey and the cowpack to cure our copper souls? Where half the town it labors, while the other half it sleeps. Up on 
Dogtown, bare knuckled I would go, for there's not a man who could best me while standing toe to toe. But I defy the crooked sheriff, for I wouldn't throw his fight away. He should have laid it on at five to two and back home Conway. Taken in con peoples with the beer and music flowing free. My brothers had just left me, bad fortune for me. Dragged out by crooked cowards, and their battles knocked me off my feet. And they left me to die there like a dog on the street. Far from the anaconda, the mine with seven stacks, far from the ashen faces of young men with crooked backs, far from the granite mountain and the dusty grave in which I lie. My spirit chases starlings through a dear name. 